And I love walking around campus um, and watching how people are when you walk by them or when you see them. Have you ever noticed how many people, when they walk, it's like this? People say, well, well, this is so dumb. Why would I want to pay attention to what's happening? Why would I want to, you know, be present? And that isn't. I should be thinking about what's next. I should be thinking about, you know, a plan. Well, what's the difference between planning and worrying? What's the difference? Because I, I don't want to. I don't want us as we talk about mindfulness and being present in the in the here and now. What's the difference between planning and worrying? One being beneficial, useful, a good thing to do with our present moments, and the other being a total waste of our psychic energy, our our psychological energy. Uh, kind of seems like it. When you're planning on something, you can let go of it quicker. When you worry about something, you're, you've always got it on your mind, and it kind of eats away at you the entire time. Usually when I plan for something, I'll be like, all right, got to do this, and then you can kind of go back to what you were doing. Okay. What are you applying? We'll get into this a lot more deeply when we play with time management, but what are you applying when you're thinking ahead to a certain activity that you would like to see happen? What are you specifically applying? We've already talked about it to a certain extent here. What are you, um, what are you putting in the mix so that you feel like it will happen how you want it to? One day we, we were talking about this and we said, as this goes up, stress goes down. As this goes down, stress goes up. Remember what that was? When you're managing your time, you're applying control to a future event. That is the definition of time management or planning, is applying control in the present moment to a future moment. Okay? Now, how does that differ from worrying? Jake, kind of, how would you expand on that with that definition? When you're thinking about, um, you're planning something, essentially in your head you're saying, okay, at this point in time, I want these events to happen. How is that different than worrying? This is, this is really important for us. Well, those events even happen. Just consider that planning, your Good, good. So you're throwing into the mix other things that may or may not happen and are usually accompanied by some threat, some kind of pain. Whenever we worry about something, worrying is simply looking into the future and adding some pain to something that we imagine, that we make up in our mind, that's part of some, so like, um, you're gonna speak in front of a group of people. We all love doing that, right? You're gonna speak in front of a group of people, okay? Your planning part of it is what? Yeah, here's what I wanna say, here's the things. What's the worrying part in our heads? Yeah, what are all the awful things they're going to think about? 
Is, is that real? No. But we still make it up. And then our body, if we attach some bad thing that they're going to think about us, our body goes, oh, well, I better prepare for it. Stress response, right? So I, so I suggest to people, well, stay in the present moment. People, I mean, that's what people tell me a lot. They, they say, man, I'm really stressed. I just say, stay at home. Well, that's cute. <laughs> and I'm serious about that. If you understood and practiced being mindful moment to moment, you'd never have to deal with worry. Because your mind would be so filled up with enjoying each moment as it's happening, you can only, here's, here's another truth. We play with this a lot more in the other class. You can only think one thought at a time. You cannot simultaneously think two thoughts. Now we think them pretty quickly, but you can never have more than one thought going. You, your consciousness cannot focus on more than one thing at a time. Okay? Now the reason why that's important is if you have a choice, which we've decided two weeks ago, we always have a choice about what we think. If we have a choice about whether to think about something that is going to cause stress, so think about some future event, or stay in the present moment and experience what's happening here and now, why would you ever choose the, the first thing? Why would anyone choose, oh, I'm going to be all upset about this, when I could be enjoying here and now? Why would we do that? Comfortable of being pain, in pain? Well, they're comfortable like, stressing out. They you know how to deal with that situation. Some people don't know how to deal with just being happy. That's true. And it always, it always makes me so laugh so hard when I think how miserable people love to be. It is comfortable to be miserable for a lot of people. I'm so stressed. I love being, I love being anxious. I love being angry. Because it's comfortable to be comfortable. That's Hold on that. I think what makes it comfortable is that they can use it as an excuse yes. for anything. They can just be like, oh, well, I'm stressed, so I'm not performing at my best, or I'm anxious, so whatever. Good handle it. Yeah. Do that. We do and, and I'm too depressed. Yeah. We do this. So, what I'm trying to point out here is this what we're learning this week is unbelievably valuable. It solves almost all of the stress that we have by this one simple principle of stay in the present moment. <laughs> now let's, let's explore it a little bit more. I, I just want to kind of be emphatic about it for a second. So we said the first two things that we do on, on Tuesday, we said the first two things that we do to help us do that, because we have to kind of retrain ourselves, the first one was what? Stop. stop. Doesn't mean stop. It means stop that endless mind chatter that's thinking about things that aren't here and now. What if we decide that, that what is not here and now is past, future, and we, we blanketed that as one thing. What is it? It's unreal. What? It's unreal. Unreal. Right. So we don't think about, we take our mind off the unreal things. What's the second thing we do? We look. And that means putting our awareness into our sensory receivers. Eyes, ears, taste, smell, balance. You know, we have inner um, receptors that tell intuition. Is. We have all kinds of um, parts of us that can take in 
information. And we put our awareness on those instead of some future thing that's not happening. Okay, good to there? We demonstrated that through the hand activity, we don't take in very much. There's so much more. And we're going to do, I'm going to have you do an exercise where it will knock your socks off when you are actually forced to be mindful. It will knock your socks off to see how little you really do take in. On the on the interstate, I never noticed that the line on the on one of those sides is yellow, and uh, <laughs> it was weird to me because normally when I'm driving out, pink, and my friend goes, "Do you ever notice that that line's yellow?" And I felt like I'd been missing out on things my whole life. <laughs> I felt so like out of it. It was weird. <laughs> well, I I think that's the question that we can ask about just about anything. Did you ever notice that? And we say, no. And why not? Because we're never paying attention. Our minds are so busy making up stuff that we stop paying attention. And as soon as we start paying attention, then we realize how cool so many things are, how wonderful, how amazing. And we live in the most, one of the most beautiful places in the world. I've been a lot of places. And the sunsets, the mountains, the skies, the, I mean, it's beautiful. As soon as we put our attention on it, the world is a sucky place until we decide to be here present with what we have. You know, you watch the news, oh man, it's going to be awful. We're going to be in depression. Oh my stock, I'm going to retire. Oh, as soon as I take my mind off that and put it on what's really happening now, it's always good. It's always good. So the third thing we do, we stop, we look. The third thing, so one, stop, two, look. The third thing is, um, let go. And um, this, this is the, well, I'm going to lump the third and the fourth thing into, into one word. Accept. We be in a state of accepting. We accept things as they are. We accept people as they are. We allow people and things to be as they are. And we're in an attitude of, oh, I'm noticing that this is how things are, and I'm okay with that. Now, this doesn't mean if there's a need for change or something that you just don't, you know, you don't deal with it. You deal with things that need to be changed. But most of the things that we have in our environment, we can't do anything about. So there's doesn't make a lot of sense to try and do anything about it. We accept. She might get in that door. <laughs> These are the words that we say to ourselves when we want to be in this when we want to stay mindful, you say to yourself, I am noticing. And then you let whatever it is show up for you. I am noticing. That could be from your, all of your senses, from your internal senses as well. But you say, I am noticing. The instant you do that, you turn into a observer as opposed to a resistor or a, or putting your minds on future and past. I am noticing our magic words. The very best definition, I want you to write this down. Um, 
the very best definition of mindfulness that I've ever come upon um, was written, uh, it was, came from John Kabat-Zinn, um, J-O-N space, and his last name is K-A-B-A-T dash Z-I-N-N, John Kabat-Zinn. He's, he's, he's an interesting person. He, he works, um, he's written probably more about mindfulness than anybody in America. Others from elsewhere have written about mindfulness. But he's probably written more about mindfulness. He works with people who the doctors um, say work with people who have chronic pain, and when they can't help them anymore, they, they give them to John. And he uses mindfulness as a way of dealing with people who are under incredible pain, emotional, physical. And he said this. He said, mindfulness involves, mindfulness involves intentionally doing only one thing at a time. Mindfulness involves intentionally doing only one thing at a time and making sure Mindfulness involves intentionally doing only one thing at a time and making sure I'm here for it. I'll just tune into that for a second. Just read that. Just sense what that's saying. It involves intentionally doing only one thing at a time. Why is that the case? Right, that's all you can do anyway, is one thing. And making sure I'm here for it. What does that mean based on all that we've talked about? Show up. Show up. Have you ever been in a conversation with somebody and you know they're not there? Don't you just love that? <laughs> you see their eyes kind of go glazy. And you know, they're thinking of something else. Isn't that the most, most enjoyable conversation of all? <laughs> you want to go. And here. But they're not. See, mindfulness applies to all situations. The more mindful we be can become, the more effective, the more peaceful, the more um, successful. One of the things that Ben Franklin said when he was asked why he was so successful, you know what he said? Ben Franklin said, the reason why I'm so su successful is I do one thing at a time. You ever been, I have this, I've noticed this happens a lot more for me since I started I don't know why I did this, but I started doing the social kinds of things online, the Facebook, Twitter, and all those things. Have you ever noticed if any of you do this, or if you do, uh, I think texting is involved with this just as much, where um, you'll be doing something, then you get the distracting, oh, this person wrote on your Facebook page, and then this person Twittered, and this person and then, oh, your cell phone, and then you're, you forgot what you were doing. Has that ever happened to you? That's doing four or five things at a time. And I found that I've had to deliberately stop doing those things. Just put this away, put that away, clean that up. There's a program I have even on my computer where it just goes black. And it types green letters, and you can't do anything else on your computer except type nice that is. To have nothing else going on. To have nothing else. To have no other distractions. Just be able to focus on that one thing. Well, that's fine. Um, have any of you ever gone to a... I, here's what I want to do for this next little bit is how can we make this practical? What are some... What are situations that we find ourselves in 
and um, how can we create them to be mindful as opposed to mindless? Um, do any of you ever go to concerts? You go to concert and you're listening to the band play or the uh, orchestra or whatever. When you're at the concert, is your main thing going on? I can't wait for this to be over. Is that your thought when you're at the concert? What's your thought? Just to keep going. Yeah. I love this. This is happening now. Right? I'm trying to quote. I want to give you this. I think we put it in the book. Um, there, there's a there's a book that we that I read a long time ago. Um, it's on the book list if any of you are are interested. Um, it's, it's, the book is called Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. It's an amazing book, but um, in this book he he gives this quote, and I want to read it to you. Just kind of tune into what he's saying here, because this is there's gets it just right on the nose. He said, he's talking about climbing a mountain. And those of you who rock climb or mountain climb or bike or, or hi do any hiking or anything where you're out in the mountains, you'll get this. I mean, this will make perfect sense to you. Um, he said, mountains should be climbed with as little effort as possible and without desire. The reality of your own nature should determine the speed of Come winded, slow down. If bored, speed up. You climb the mountain in equilibrium between restlessness and exhaustion. Then, when you're no longer thinking ahead, and I include it, in other words, being mindful, in other words, enjoying what's here and now, each footstep isn't just a means to an end, but a unique event in itself. This leaf has jagged ledge, edges. This rock looks loose. From this place, the snow is less visible, even though closer. These are the things you should notice anyway. To live only for some future goal is shallow. It is the sides of the mountains that sustain the top. Here is where things grow. Do you get the sense of what he's trying to say there? It's where we are. That's the most enjoyable. Um, let me give you this. Okay. It says, and this should be clearer now. What? I couldn't say this at the beginning of the, our discussion on this, and it would make sense, but now it should. There's no stress in the present moment. Why not? Because there's never a threat that's bearing down on us in the present moment like the big bear charging at us, except less than 1% of the time. To be, to be mindful means you do what you're doing when you're doing it to the exclusion of everything else. You focus on this moment only. So, when you're in this moment and you notice yourself becoming stressed, you can ask yourself these simple and powerful questions. What am I doing? And what am I not doing? What I am doing is what I am doing. What I am not doing is everything else. You can also ask, what is happening? And what is not happening? What is happening is what I'm currently experiencing. <coughs> what is not happening is everything else. Do you get that? Does that make sense? So be present with what is happening. Do what you're doing and don't try to do anything else because everything else is an illusion. As we do this, we slow down. We immediately become calm. As we don't, we get stress. It's a choice. And I love this quote by Mark Twain. He says, I'm an, I'm an old man and I have known, I'm an old man and I have known a great many troubles, but most of them never happen. What does he mean by that? An old man, I've known many troubles, a great many troubles, but most of them never happen. 
sini. They never turn out, right? Oh, I call her up and she says, get lost, jerk. I know that bad things are going to happen. Never do. Bad things don't happen. It gets tricky sometimes. Things always turn out. I shouldn't say bad things never happen. But when they are happening, we usually can handle it. It's the worrying about the bad things that can happen that's a waste of our mental energy. Our present moment energy should not be focused on the bad things that might happen. That's a waste of our energy. Let me give you two examples. Um, to kind of show the extreme of this, um, there was a guy by the name of Thich Nhat Hanh. Um, this is in your book, so I'm not going to... Just listen, just kind of attend to this. Um, his, he's a Tibetan monk, and he wrote several books on mindfulness, including the book called Peace in, Peace in Every Footstep, or something. I think that's the name of it. Um, he wrote another book called The Miracle of Mindfulness. And he wrote this, and just Pay attention to this, because he, he's writing about something as absolutely mundane as you can possibly imagine, washing dishes. He says this, and see if this fits, is what we're saying. To my mind, the idea that doing dishes is unpleasant can occur only when you aren't doing them. I enjoy taking my time with each dish, being fully aware of the dish, the water, and each movement of my hands. I know that if I hurry in order to go and have a cup of tea, the time will be unpleasant and not worth living. That would be a pity. For each minute, each second of life is a miracle. Each bowl I wash, each poem I compose. Each time I invite a bell to sound is a miracle. And each has exactly the same value. You can get this. I mean, this, this next sentence is... It's, I'm not, there's not too many places it says this better than what we're trying to say to this. He says, and this is why I think we are so unhappy most of the time. Why, why people are so happy with being unpleasant, in pain or whatever, emotionally. He says, if I am incapable of washing dishes joyfully, if I want to finish them quickly so I can go and have a cup of tea, I will be equally incapable of drinking the tea joyfully. With the cup in my hands, I'll be thinking about what to do next, and the fragrance and the flavor of the tea, together with the pleasure of drinking it, will be lost. I will always be dragged into the future, never able to live in the present moment. Does that make sense? Always the next thing is our mind on. Gosh, I almost sound like Yoda just then. Our mind stays on. It, it's so much focused on, okay, what am I going to do next? And that's where it always is. Or what, what happened before. And we don't enjoy, in our other class we do this exercise. You guys remember the one, the eating exercise where you had to go and eat? Um, I, I have them do this exercise where they have to go to a restaurant and by themselves, no cell phone, no books, no anything, and enjoy their favorite meal. Nothing else. That was the assignment. Do you remember your experience of it? Do you remember you went? Do you remember what you ate? What was your experience? Do you remember? I got full faster. Did you? Yeah. Did you notice any difference in how you ate that meal versus? I ate it more slowly. It was, it was better. It tasted better. Did you? Well, do you remember your experience of it? 
I did a couple of them. One I remember most was I went to Wendy's and got like the triple burger because that thing's so delicious. <laughs> And like I eating it slowly, I realized just how disgusting it is, and I haven't been able to eat one since. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> Resell your fast food, probably. Not completely, but with that burger, yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, the, the assignment is for them to to actually taste their food. You know, how many times do you eat your food, and it's just like ah, I don't know what I'm eating, but I'm sure there's calories there. Oh, there's some salt, okay, good. Some sugar, okay, good. And okay, now I'm full. Or I'm not full yet, so I better eat some more. Does that, that sound familiar? And we miss out on the food. We miss out on how delicious the food is. Now compare that um, washing, his, washing his dishes analogy to the one that I had on the opposite end of the spectrum, I mean, that's so dull and monotonous and, you know, washing dishes, how do you be mindful of it? The other end is, um, a few years back, we went to uh, Magic Mountain in California, and they have this ride there called California Screaming. Some of you have probably been on that ride. It's just a killer of a good ride. Um, and imagine how silly it would be when you're on this ride where it's, you know, you're sitting there and in a second you're going to be going 60 miles an hour and suddenly you're going shooting up this thing and then you're flipping and all these things and you're flying around. Imagine how absolutely stupid it would be while you're on the ride to be thinking, oh, I sure hope I get a parking for this month ago. Man, I wish I wouldn't have said that to my daughter last night. That was probably not a very nice thing. While you're on the ride, What would be your experience of the ride if that's what you're thinking about? Remember, you can only think one think one thing. So you're choosing to think about the parking spot you might not get. What do you miss? And that's the essence of mindfulness. Is not only do we get peacefulness when we bring ourselves to the present, but we also get to enjoy the ride. That's the essence of stress management is, man, we, we have a life that we should be enjoying. Everyone around us says, oh, you got to be, you know, it's a tough life, and then you die. <laughs> My thinking is, it's a wonderful life. If that's what I choose to focus on, and I know that when I focus on what is happening right now, last week, See, it was Sunday or Saturday, one of those evenings. Um, I have a two-year-old who runs our home. He's, the, he's in charge of our home. Every bit of our home revolves around the two-year-old right now. And he wanted to play with the Wii, you know, the little race car thing. It's two when he wins. <laughs> And one of us had to be with him. He insisted that one of us was with him. Either my wife or myself, because my kids won't. They're just tired of hanging out. And so we're sitting there with, that's not true, but uh, it seems like it. I'm sitting with him, playing with the Wii. You know, and, and this little miracle of a kid. You know, we're all miracles. He's a two-year-old is just a miracle. That two years ago, he was nothing. And now he's a little kid. I think that's just so cool. And he's, he's driving this car on TV. And then he says he wanted to go out on the tramp, on, the, on our trampoline. And I'm thinking, oh, geez, I've got so much to do on a Saturday night, right? No, it wasn't Saturday. It wouldn't have been Saturday because I was watching the game. But there was a, it was, I think it was Sunday night. And I was thinking, I have so much to do that would be better than hanging out with my dad was Sunday night. And, and I kept thinking of all the things that I had to get done. And then I thought, um, you know, I'm just going to be with him. And really, for about an hour, because he didn't want me to leave. 
we jumped on the trampoline for an hour. And it was such a blast. It was so much fun. And it was and, and I kept thinking as we as I was jumping, I kept thinking, I'm sure I gotta go do something better than this. And then I would bring myself back to how cool is this that I get to jump on a trampoline with this little person. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, it just filled up the moment by putting my attention on what was really happening as opposed to all the other things that I couldn't be doing anything about while I'm with him. And it was so great. It was just so complete just being there with him in that moment. And we have that, the thing about this is we have that at every moment we are, that we can just be present. Um, so let me ask you this. What are times in our lives, what are some experiences that we have that we frequently do mindlessly that could be mindful instead that would be suddenly terrific? Let's just kind of open this up to some discussing. You know, or, or would make the situation a lot better. I mentioned having a conversation with somebody. You know, you're with somebody and you're, you're with them. And they're with you better conversation. What other situations do we have where if we were mindful instead of mindless, instead of when we're focusing on reality, here and now instead of future past and elsewhere, that things would be better? Or stay two seconds behind the next guy in front of you so you don't hit him. Even something small as that. Have you ever been driving and you notice you're just gripping the steering wheel and you go, <laughs> because you've been thinking about something that's stressful and kind of go, <laughs> well, perfect example. Tune into what's happening around you. No stress in the present moment. Bam. Nice drives, huh? I was thinking about homework <coughs> because I've noticed sometimes when I've been homework on my stress water and I'll probably get it done. So this semester I'm just trying to focus straight on the homework and do a lot, a lot better. Far more productive. Unquestionably, we'll be more productive when we do one thing at a time. You'll do better on your tests if you focus on the test and not what's going to happen if you blow the test. Right? Your mind will be, Einstein will show up if your focus is on here and now. Einstein will leave, lizard brain will crank if you're focused on the consequences of blowing the test. Anything. Jake, when you're bike riding, you're flying down, you know, one of those hills that you do, you know, 25, 30 miles an hour. Can you afford to not be mindful? What would happen if you if you let your mind wander off? Stop the trail real quick. You miss the rock, bam! You're, you're on your side, right? I mean, that, in all the bike riding I do, I'm always thinking that this is the perfect example of if you're not mindful, you're dead, <laughs> right? I mean, some of the trails I bet you ride, if you're not staying here and now, you could die. Some of those cliffs that are right there, if you, oh, whatever, okay, I'll make a What other things do we do that if we were mindful, if we were intentionally doing only one thing at a time and making sure we're there for it, that it would be better? I think my most mindless time is grocery shopping, because I think of like everything else 
personal world, and even when I have like a go through this, it's like I overlook the things that I was just at, and I get home and I'm like, man, I forgot like five things, you know? So it would be a lot more productive if I would pay Good. attention to all this. Productivity goes up in every way. That's an excellent example. Any others? Uh, to go along with homework, I'd say being in class. Because like, I'll find myself in class like thinking about my next class or my last class or the test I've got coming next week or something or the test I've got tomorrow or whatever. And then I find I've missed like 10, 15 minutes of lecture and I'm completely lost. And so I say definitely class yeah. for me. If it's going to be helpful for you to be there or if you've even, you know, Nobody in here has to be in here. We realize that. We're selecting to be here. It's entire, like, no one's holding a gun to your head saying, all right, go to Mike's class at 10.30. <laughs> it's entirely our choice. Why would we choose to do anything in our lives that we don't feel like it's worth putting our attention on? Would we? That's we're going to study there. I often think of things like, have you ever taken a shower and have no idea anything associated with the shower the whole 15 minutes or 10 minutes that you were showering? You get in and your mind's everywhere else except, oh man, this feels good. I think that's why people love jacuzzi so much. When you get in a jacuzzi, you're like, Oh, this feels terrific. Mindfulness. This feels terrific. What I'm sensing feels great. So we get in showers and it's like mindlessly in there. And then we're done. And we forget about how cool it is to have the warm water relaxing our muscles. We're more stressed after because we've been thinking of stuff instead of enjoying relaxing nature of the warm water. I think eating is a perfect example. Uh, you think of any other things? Work? Why not? I mean, give me an example. Why do you say that? You might hate it worse. Well, <laughs> like at my job, it gets really stressful and people, people are freaking out, yelling at each other. What do you do? What's your job? I am a hostess, and I just I, oh, I where? watch the like the oaks and the family. Oh, okay. And uh, I watch people just yell at each other. You get really mad, and and uh, if you just if you just don't worry about it, if you just think about I'm I'm doing this right now, then you don't do that. You don't get upset about the things that just happen. You just if you spill something, you just right. clean it up. It's over. And you're on to the next moment instead of, oh, I shouldn't have done that. That's not accepting. That's holding on to whatever past experience needs to be held on to because, you know, I'll show them how angry I am. Mindfulness says stay here instead of in that past moment. Excellent example. Crystal, did you have a thought? I was the same as work. I just, um, I'm a CNA and a lot of the time we have patients come in and they come in and out and you don't really sit down and talk to them and mm -hmm. um, that's kind of one of our things at work is like healing connections to sit down and talk to patients but sometimes you can't always do that and one day this old lady was just like sitting in the window and she's like she's all look at the trees out there and just saying like we don't really sit down and look out the window and she's just she actually made me sit down and mm -hmm. get in a conversation with her and I actually got to know her more and she actually was a Holocaust survivor. I actually right? got to learn more. And get How do you think it would be, Crystal, if you were it, with the people, the patients who you see in there, how do you think it would affect their dispositions or their sense of um, even recovery if they felt like there was, a, there was somebody there who cared about them on a regular basis? Do you think it would affect it at all? It does all the time. Oh, you that, think so? That one little second sometimes that they just get to say something that doesn't have to do with what they're dealing with, 
they often thank you and say thanks for talking to me like I didn't think about what was going on. And it actually took their mind off what was happening. How enormous is that? I mean, we can't even estimate how much of an impact you can have just by showing up and being okay with letting them what that'll do for them, as opposed to, you know, you talk to people and you forget their, you, how many times do you, you introduce to somebody, five seconds later you have no recollection of their name? <laughs> Every time, huh? Where's your mind when they say, hi, I'm Mike? And, and their mind is, not here, it's somewhere else. And so when you, what was your name again? Not being mindful. How cool that would be. I mean, people, that's the thing that people love to hear more than any other thing is their own name, according to psychological studies. The thing that people love to hear more than any other thing is their own name. You can't remember it because you weren't there when they introduced themselves. Um, lots of it. I think mindfulness applies in all situations. Um, does anyone else have any thoughts about this? I want to give you this final quote and then we're going to give you an exercise to do. This is from Ron Smotherman who wrote Winning Through Enlightenment, a great little book. And he said this, um, he said, all the confusion clears up when we, when we realize there is only one time, and that time is now. If you're willing to experience the truth that it is right now, your problems about the past and the future will clear up. Why? Because there is no past or future. There is only right now. If you're stuck in what you call the past, you're stuck right now. Get that? If you spend your time daydreaming about the future, you do that process right now. You can't even go to these places called past, past and future. They simply aren't real. It's all we have. The one thing that I'm sure of, I'm not sure of too many things, but the one thing I am sure of is it is always here and now for us. That's all we have in this life. And our choice is be present with it or not. When we are, we get good things happen. Um, the, uh, the final one I'll mention and then I'll give you a second. So, when you're a uh, having a hard time falling asleep. Think about what your mind's doing when you're falling asleep. And when you're not falling asleep, when it's not happening. Where is your mind usually when you're struggling to have sleep happen? On tomorrow? And what are you thinking about when you're thinking about tomorrow? All the things you've got to do, you know, like planning and worrying are happening. Um, what do people who help people fall with sleep problems usually tell them to do? What have we always been told? Okay, if you have this sleep problem, try this. What do they suggest? Count sheep. Okay, what, what does that do? There's actually some value to that. What is, what happens when we count sheep? Yeah, you're not. Your mind's not focusing. What did you say? I said the same thing. Just one thing. Yeah, your mind's not focusing on all the unreal, unreal things that are turning. See, when you're thinking of all those things that you should be doing, your body's listening to that part of your conversation, which is. I should be doing something now. Your body doesn't ever know about a future something happening. It's all now. And so if you're thinking about something in the future that you should be doing, 
your body's only hearing the should be doing part, not the in the future part. Does that make sense? So if we're thinking about that future time, our body's going, I should be doing, I should be, I should be doing something because that's the message I'm getting. As soon as we take our mind off of future and past and put it on something that's happening right now, right now boom, we fall asleep. Most sleeping problems can be solved by just that one single thing. By putting your attention on something that's happening here and now, the easiest thing I know of is your breath. Sheep, I guess. That would be okay. But your breathing, is that a here and now something? That's why people, that's why autogenics works, because you focus on your arms, you focus on your breathing, you focus on your legs, and your body goes, oh, I guess this, I don't have to be doing anything right now. And I'm lying down, that must mean it's time to sleep, song. Send me an email, Jake. Um, does that make sense for us? Sleeping problems are simple to fix by just putting your attention on here and now, bam. That's what the relaxation exercises are designed to do. All right, so here's what I'd like you to do.